Welcome to our uh, webinar about athletics at the program at Washington Christian Academy. We sure appreciate you spending some time with us this afternoon. We expect uh, to go about 30 minutes today and we'll have a time for question and answers at the end. Uh, my name is Dave Haas. I'm the Director of Operations at WCA. I've been here about 11 years and uh, have had at uh, various times all of my five children uh, here at Washington Christian Academy and the youngest is uh, now going into eighth grade. Uh, I think, well, all but one of them have participated in the athletic uh, programs and have a, three of them doing that right now. So I've experienced the athletic program here both uh, as an administrator and as a parent. Joining me today is Tim Bratt, our athletic director, and he's going to do um, most of the talking today. We're going to kind of follow a little question and answer format. Let me uh, go through our agenda. Uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about WCA. We've had folks register for this webinar that are uh, uh, current WCA parents, and uh, if you're out there, welcome. Uh, but for those that are not familiar with Washington Christian Academy, I'll spend just a little bit of time you know, talking about our school. Then we're going to talk about our uh, athletic program. Uh, as you can see in the agenda, goals and philosophies, uh, you know, just the details about the league that we're in and uh, the different teams that we have, uh, you know, what we think about uh, the kinds of coaches we want to have and, and how we think about our players. And then in general, you know, why uh, the athletic program is important, how it fulfills our mission, how it uh, helps us do the kinds of things we're looking at doing in the classroom, but it does that you know, on the playing fields and in the courts and even allows us uh, to fulfill that mission in a way, unique ways outside the classroom. The Washington Christian Academy is uh, a private school located in Olney, Maryland. We serve uh, students from grades kindergarten all the way up through 12th grade. Uh, it was started back in 1960, so we have uh, over 55 years now as a school. Um, you know, has you know, grown over the years. Again, now we're located in Olney. We've been in a couple, you know, rented facilities uh, since then. And uh, real briefly, if, if someone asked me to kind of highlight what I think, you know, is at the center of who we are as Washington Christian Academy, you know, I would use the three words you see there on the screen. Uh, first, we're reverent. Um, you know, that means not only the kind of atmosphere that we want to have as a, as a Christian school, but we want to be intentionally Christian. And so our part of our you know, purpose is to you know, have the students here uh, grow in their faith. You know, one way I express that is, you know, you should be a, a student or have your uh, children at WCA if you want your Christian faith to be a part of their school experience. Um, and, and so we hope, hope to see that reflected in the general community here. Uh, we also use the word adventurous, and that really applies in lots of different areas. So we're talking about athletics today. You know, we, we think about that in a couple ways. You know, there, there are uh, some adventures as you pursue athletics. Tim's going to be talking about that. Um, but uh, being adventurous at times is about taking risks. So that's one of the ways we think about uh, the, the kind of educational experience we have here. We want one that allows students to take risks. And again, in the context of our athletic uh, discussion today, you know, that might be a student you know, going out for a sport that they hadn't participated in. But we like to see that adventuresome spirit in that manner. We see it academically and in students pursuing, uh, you know, pursuing things uh, that they might not otherwise. We see it in our fine arts program. You know, students uh, try out for the play maybe and, and are in front of their fellow classmates acting when they haven't done that before. But we like to have a, a an, an environment here that is adventurous. And you see the third thing on the screen is academically serious. We are a school and we want to uh, be faithful and responsible to be serious about providing an education to the students here at WCA. Uh, we want to equip them for those purposes the Lord has for them, you know, at the point that they leave here. And that's why it's, uh, it's important that we take that academic uh, education work that we're doing seriously. And you'll hear Tim uh, talk about that some as well as uh, he talks about our view of the student athlete. 
So that's a little bit about WCA. Again, at the end, if there are uh, questions, that then you can submit your questions kind of throughout uh, the presentation. There's a, a place for that in a, in a chat session. So if you have a question, please feel free to submit one, and we'll keep an eye out uh, on those. And uh, now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tim first, and, and I'm going to ask him to give us a little uh, uh, a review of uh, him and, and his relationship to Washington Christian Academy. Uh, thanks, Dave. I'm Tim Brett. I am going into my seventh year as the athletic director here. Um, I have also served in a variety of other roles. I do teach some classes. Um, I've been the varsity boys soccer coach for five years now. Um, I was fortunate enough to actually graduate from Washington Christian Academy uh, back in 2005. So um, it's just been a, it's been wonderful to come back. Uh, one, of the, one of the most influential parts of my high school experience was certainly athletics. And so I've greatly enjoyed having the opportunity to provide uh, that experience and to frame and create that experience for the students now. All right, well, let, thanks, Tim. Let's get into uh, the athletic program. As you can see on our uh, first slide here, um, you know, we're interested in sharing with those listening, you know, what is the overall goal of our athletic program? You know, what is this about as we think about, you know, we uh, you know, executing our program and, and the things we do here, in, in essence, why are we doing it? What, what's the goal? Yeah. Um... I mean, this question is asked all the time for athletic departments, and I think you hear a lot of the same kinds of answers um, over and over again, and there are certainly elements of that that we also believe. Uh, we want our student athletes to compete well. We want them to pursue excellence, but uh, I feel the part that sets us apart from that is that we really intentionally focus on honoring Christ and glorifying God with all that we do. Um, you know, we want championships and character and Christ-like values to just be uh, packaged into one bundle. Um, we want coaches that are going to be very intentional about this. I want to be very intentional about this, about setting our program apart from others with that focus. Um, you know, I define a successful team as one that reaches their fullest potential on the field or the court and all the while honoring Christ with what they do and what they say and, and how they think and act. Thank you, Tim. Let's get into some of the details about the athletic program, the league that we're uh, a member of and the different sports and teams that we have. Yeah, we've been in the uh, PVAC, the Potomac Valley Athletic Conference, for about four years now. Um, there are 13 to 14 other schools in it from Maryland, D.C., um, one school in Virginia, uh, relatively small private and independent schools. Um, it is not a uh, Christian league. There are four or five Christian schools in the conference, uh, and the rest are non-religious um, we have felt uh, very comfortable with the league. I think it's a good fit, a good fit for us uh, in terms of size and what other schools are trying to accomplish. I think we all sort of line up pretty well in our philosophies, um, and it's been it's been very good for us. It's, it's been competitive, especially, and we like that a lot. Um, in terms of the teams that we offer in the conference uh, for the fall, we have girls volleyball, and then varsity, girls varsity volleyball, we have boys varsity soccer, girls varsity soccer, and varsity cross country. And for the fall, um, at the middle school level, we have middle school boys soccer and middle school girls soccer. And then in the winter, we have varsity boys and girls basketball, middle school boys and girls basketball, and cheerleading. And then we hit the spring, and we have varsity baseball, varsity softball, varsity golf, and varsity track. And then uh, the middle school has a baseball team in the spring. All right. In the uh, at the heart, just kind of in the same way that our teachers are on the front lines in, in the classrooms with our students, you know, we understand that the coaches are the ones at the front lines uh, with the athletes. So Tim, talk to us a, a little bit about the coaches, the kinds of coaches we have, and 
and our uh, philosophy about coaching. Um, a handful of our coaches work here at WCA, uh, which is great. Uh, we think that that's very ideal to have teacher coaches or coaches who are here on staff, who see the kids throughout the day, who interact with them outside of the athletic setting. Um, so we do have uh, several staff members who are also coaches. Um, the rest are from the immediate WCA community. And then there are uh, even more just from the extended local Christian community. Um, you know, we advertise to uh, several local churches in the area and we end up pulling some coaches from those advertisements. Um, you know, when I interview coaches, uh, I'm looking for somebody who's certainly passionate about the sport, passionate about their faith, um, because we want them to be influential. Um, we want them to be able to train the players well. I mean, we're, we're in an athletic setting, and so that's certainly something we're looking for. Um, but we also want them to be able to influence these kids. We want them to be mentors. We want them to be role models. We want them to uh, help the student athletes achieve excellence on the field and off the field um, and really just continue to push their faith along, help them to grow into young men and young women. Um, sort of a, uh, you know, rolled into this is this idea of playing time and how do coaches approach that. Um, we have a philosophy at each level. Um, at the middle school, we have certainly starters and subs. The starters will play more. The subs will get time. Uh, we want coaches who are intentional about developing every player, though. Um, and so there's certainly a focus on winning, but we also want a focus on development of all the players. Um, at that young age, everybody needs a chance to get involved. Um, oftentimes, this will mean we have we have B teams and just provide opportunities for anybody that's interested in playing. Uh, at the JV level, we have sort of the same idea as the middle school level. The starters will play more. The subs are utilized. Um, but playing time starts to become a little bit of a competition. Um, we want everybody to get time. We want everybody to develop, but it, it's just approaching that varsity level just a little bit more. And then at the varsity, uh, this is when playing time is definitely competitive. Um, starters and a handful of subs are going to be, you know, the majority that gets time. Um, other subs will certainly get time when appropriate. Um, you know, the coaches are certainly intentional about seeing every player on the team and giving them opportunities when they can. Uh, but I sort of liken it to almost an AP class in high school where you need to be prepared. Um, it's a step above a regular class, and it requires more hard work. It requires more dedication. Um, so that's our, uh, that's our ideas for playing time and, and what I'm looking for with coaches. And... So you talked some about, uh, you know, that the, the playing time and when teams are on there, you know, that kind of hits the team selection part. You know, we think of, uh, of those involved in athletics as uh, student athletes. So tell us uh, what, uh, what we mean by that, Tim. Um, one of the things that I am very proud of for our program is that we have such a high participation rate. Um, we've been hitting 70% at the middle school and at the high school level. Um, of student student athletes who participate on at least one sport each year. Um, so, you know, I, I've, I've seen some other numbers thrown out there. I feel like 70% is very high. Um, we're a relatively smaller school, and I'm very happy with the amount of kids that are at least coming out for one sport a year or uh, potentially trying something new. Uh, Dave talked about the adventurous side of WCA, and that certainly plays into our athletic program and that we do push kids, especially the younger kids at the middle school and the JV level to try something that they've never tried before. Um, as the varsity boys soccer coach, I had a player come out at freshman year who had very little experience playing soccer. And long story short, by the time he graduated as a senior, he was nominated to the first team all conference. Um, and it was a, it was a huge step for this player. And that's certainly a success story that we like to see, that we encourage, and that's what we're hoping for with our students, that they will try new things until they find something they really enjoy, and then they will commit to that and, and see how successful they can be. Um, in terms of tryouts, 
we will do it if necessary, but we really try and avoid it. Um, you know, we haven't had like full on cuts for a while now. We want to create opportunities for everybody. So that means B teams, uh, JV teams, whatever we can do to create a chance for everybody that is interested to play. Um, and, you know, we talked about the playing time earlier. So varsity isn't really so much an experiment there, but uh, at those younger years, we want everybody to get a chance. And so we create those opportunities. We want to develop everybody and give them the opportunity to play and, and test out the sport or to play and get better and better and, and continue to develop. Um, in terms of, you know, how busy the players and teams are, we sort of have a framework of two to three events for middle school per week. And then at the varsity level, you know, you're looking at four to five events per week. Um, we have some weekend activities. It's not consistent and we uh, have a strict no Sunday policy. So there is always a day off and, and most of the time our teams get Saturdays off as well. Um, the student athlete, Dave mentioned that, uh, you know, those, those three sort of phrases or words that we were describing Washington Christian as reverent, uh, adventurous and academically serious really play into the athletic program too. Um, and in terms of academically serious, we, we understand and we want our student athletes to understand that the end goal is for them to get an education. Um, they are not in high school to play sports. They are not in high school to get a scholarship. Uh, they are not in high school to win championships. Those are good things and that can be celebrated and exciting. But at the end of the day, they're here to get an education and we wanna make sure we always keep that in focus. Um, so we have certain eligibility requirements that we need them to meet to play. If they start falling behind in their grades, then we have a committee that'll meet and deal with that situation on a case by case basis. And we do everything we can to try and help them along and to motivate them uh, to get those grades up, and, but still be involved with the team in some way. Um, and we think that works pretty well for our situation. Well, Tim, given that, uh, I think as you were, you know, referred to, you know, very few, you know, high school, you know, athletes are going to go on and, you know, play in college. And so it might even beg the question, you know, why do schools, you know, schools, uh, you know, have athletic programs? Why, you know, what does that have to do with education? And, and in our case, you know, we have a specific mission to fulfill or, you know, founded to fulfill that mission. Um, uh, someone might ask the question, are we just doing athletics because that's what, you know, generally the kids want to do and they want to participate, so it's kind of convenient here. Um, you know, how does it help us, the athletic program, help us actually fulfill the mission? Yeah, the, uh, this idea of, you know, what, what is the goal of an athletic department, um, you know, we think it's great when student athletes move on and play in college. Um, that is that is wonderful. That's exciting. That's a great opportunity for them. But you know, I mean, across the nation, if the end goal of an athletic department is to put their student athletes into college teams, then you know, schools would be sending one percent of their athletes on, mm -hmm. and they'd all be failing that goal. 1% um, is a failing rate, I think. Even <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even at the highest, you know, you hit 10%, you're still right. at a terrible rate. Right. Um, and so that just, that can't be the end goal is to move kids on to the next chapter in their sports career. And that can be wonderful, but at the end of the day, it's got to be preparing them for life. It's got to be helping us fulfill our mission, which is that the students and student athletes would take their places worthily in church, society, and state. And so we want the athletic department to very much be involved in that. We want our coaches to be intentional about this, to help our students pursue excellence, to help them to grow in their faith, to help them build character. Uh, you know, competition often unfortunately reveals the worst of our character at times. And we want coaches who are going to be there to help correct that. Uh, to help our student athletes to just grow, to develop on and off the field, um, and certainly praise their their best character when that is shown. Right. We uh, we often think of 
you know, the fields and the courts, you know, we use the phrase as an extension of the classroom. You know, I think what uh, a part of what that means is in the kinds of things that, as you know, Tim talked about, we're fulfilling our mission in the classrooms, we're fulfilling them on the courts, but there are ways that, uh, you know, the athletic program is just, in some sense, an extension of the classroom. So um, fill us in a little bit on that, Tim. Yeah, uh, you know, if, if we believe that learning stopped after the last class, I think we would just give up on extracurricular activities. Um, but we very much believe that there's still learning taking place after classes are over. Um, you know, there's countless values and ideals that I believe student athletes can learn from competing on a team and playing sports. Um, you know, the list goes on to hard work, integrity, responsibility, uh, setting goals, handling disappointment when you don't reach a goal. Uh, teamwork is always big. Respect for your opponent, respect for your teammates, respect for officials, respect for coaches. Mm. Um, on and on and on. There's so much to be learned. And, uh, you know, one, uh, one of the really important ones is just winning how to or learning how to win and learning how to lose. Um, and there's a way to do that well and a way to do that poorly. And, you know, we want coaches who are deliberate about showing our student athletes how to win well, how to lose well and using the countless teachable moments that'll come up during a season and uh, utilizing those to help grow and develop our student athletes. Yeah, I think, you know, so interesting is, you know, we see, you know, year after year and with uh, the students here, and I'm sure, you know, you parents see it in the, you know, different children that you have, how, you know, there are different things that they respond to or not. And, you know, Tim talked about you know, learning to handle disappointment. So for some, you know, that's going to happen in the classroom. That's where that lesson is going to be learned, you know, primarily in the classroom. That's where maybe their passion connects. And certainly that's what you see. You're not too disappointed if you fail in something you don't care about. <laughs> so, you know, they're going to be students who are passionate about a particular class or subject and, and challenges in there, what are going to be the real opportunities. Uh, but then there's another whole group where that is going to happen on the playing field. And mm -hmm. as their passions kick in there, then as you talked about that, how to win, how to lose, you know, that's the, the place where we're going to have the most traction and yeah. have the most effect yeah. in their lives for that particular group of students. And so as we think about at, at the school, you know, all the different kinds of students we're going to have here, again, all the pa different kind of interests and passions they're going to have, the, the different way they handle circumstances, and that we are interested in, you know, life lessons and in that kind of preparation. We're looking for every opportunity. And so for us, the more different kinds of things we can have for them, the different circumstances we can have them in, that just creates more of those opportunities. And, and uh, as we've seen, you know, the athletic program is a place where a lot of that happens. A lot of, uh, a lot of students are passionate uh, about uh, athletics, and we see that come out. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some ways we believe that even, you know, the athletic program, you know, has some characteristics about that that kind of go beyond what a typical, you know, academic classroom is like. And, and there, are some, there are some interesting things that can happen there that uh, that take the athletic program in some sense beyond the classroom. So Tim, uh, share with us some about that. Yeah, um, you know, in terms of learning, it, it can look very similar to a classroom where a coach is basically a teacher and the student athletes are students, you know, take away the desks and, and it can look very similar. But there are definitely some ways that it can be different than a classroom as well. Um, you know, I think the biggest one, and this is on everybody's list when it comes to the benefits of athletics, is going to be teamwork. You know, you're going to have group projects in class, certainly. We do that here. Um, but, you know, the majority of work is going to be individual, and it's an individual pursuit of excellence, an individual pursuit of, you know, testing well, of writing a great paper, of memorizing vocabulary, on and on. At the end of the day, your grades are going to be an individual reward or uh, assessment. Um, 
And when it comes to athletics, you know, at least the majority of the teams is going to be a very team centered approach. It's going to be 11 people working towards a goal or five people or nine people working towards a common goal. Um, and we have, we have sports where there is an individual component, you know, cross country runners can score individually and track runners can score individually. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, on the picture there, you see a perfect example. Each of those golfers scores individually, but together they win the banner. Um, and so this idea of working as a team towards a goal and it brings out a totally different emotion instead of you know being frustrated with yourself or you know celebrating an accomplishment that you had now suddenly you you can be affected by somebody else's actions uh, one of your teammates makes a mistake and costs you a game how do you handle that um you know or one of your teammates makes an exceptional play and and wins the game uh now you're handling how do I deal with other people? How do I myself be a great teammate to them? How do I support them uh, when they make mistakes? And, and I look to them when I make mistakes and just feeding off of each other uh, as a team is such a wonderful lesson in my opinion. Yeah, I think um, you know, we've, we've certainly seen that you know, in our own you know, family. I, and there's, a, there's an aspect I, I think of in athletics that can uh, come out in a classroom, but typically we see it more in the athletic field, just that idea of you know, being a support. You know, earlier in the webinar, you mentioned you know, playing time, and, mm -hmm. and you know, teams can't just be made up of those players that get playing time. You need you know, more folks there. There's a you know, potential for injury, but just on the, as they're practicing, yeah. you, know, you need you know, a larger group to create the kind of practice environment that's going to make, you know, the starters better. And, you know, that's a, a challenging role to play, you know, to be one of the supporting cast, you know, so to speak, you know, you're not, you know, you're on the bench more, but and you're watching the others win and, and they're the ones getting noticed, but, you know, you're the one that can be there at the practices, you know, day by day and, and week by week. And you're making the team better, even though in the end result, you know, you're not recognized. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge, uh, hugely important life lesson, you know, that, to learn. And, and again, it can show up in the classroom. I think, you know, there are often group projects we have here, and there might be one presenter of that group project. But, you know, day in and day out, that's happening you know, on uh, the athletic fields and in those teams. So that's a that's a great thing too, and I think as Tim mentioned too, you know we love the the dynamics of those groups, and in some sense the the shared joys are are uh, are bigger, the shared disappointments are bigger, but that's you know that's a part of life too. So um, we really, as you can, as at least as hopefully you know you've seen as we've gone through this. Um, you know, we think that athletic program is, you know, a really, really important part, uh, certainly of what, you know, we're trying to accomplish here at Washington Christian Academy. You know, we value the you know, coaches that we have and, and you know, the, what they give just in, in the same sense that we value the teachers. And, you know, year after year, we see things happening through the athletic program in the context of the teams. Uh, that are there. I, uh, Tim and I were talking about this some yesterday in the preparation for this webinar, and and uh, you know I was remembering back to my high school days, and mm -hmm. you know what I remember, um, you know if I had to list the top five things or ten things I remember from high school, um, probably the majority of them would have been athletic things that happened. You know the first thing that pops into my mind about my sophomore year. Of high school was our football team, you know, going undefeated that year, you know, and uh, obviously I still remember that. There's a lot I don't remember from yesterday, but uh, and I won't tell you how many years ago that was, you know. But I remember that, and and you know that that just shows the the significance of this for us. Well, that's the the content that we have for you. Uh, thanks for staying with us through this, you know, 30 minutes or so. 
we uh, we sure appreciate it. If you uh, have questions, you know, you're welcome to submit them. You know, in the chat area, I'm going to uh, I'm going to throw a question. You know, at Tim. Uh, in fact, I'll bring it out now. Uh, so we I haven't warned him about this and given him a minute to think about it. Just talk about the future. You know, any any you know thoughts about the future of the athletic program here at WCA? That'll give uh, give you out folks out there a chance to. Um, to submit questions if you have them. And also questions about the school uh, as well, or certainly you're welcome to you know, send us an email. There's a contact page on our website or, uh, or certainly you know, call the school. We'd love to follow up with you ask, an answering more questions either about the athletic program or just questions in general about the school. So Tim, uh, maybe a little bit about uh, kind of our, our vision yeah. for, uh, for you know, continuing and, and future athletic program here. Yeah, I'm, uh, man, the future. I'm, I'm excited about a couple things. Um, you know, we've, we've had very recently a couple of new staff coaches join us, uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, I think that we are really starting to invest in our coaches and uh, come alongside them to help them build up their programs. Uh, the thing I'm most excited about is as the school continues to grow is creating more opportunities. Um, I'd love to see a middle school component to all of our varsity teams. I'd love to see JV teams and really turn our programs into a, a just a robust opportunity for students, um, you know, from middle school up into JV, up into varsity, and developing those kids, giving them those opportunities to try new things, to find things they love, or to simply uh, get better at something they're passionate about. Um, you mentioned uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, the small percentage of of students that go on into college. But what we didn't say is how you know learning a particular sport can serve that person not necessarily in college or maybe in like the intramural program at college maybe yeah. not in the you know division one team but certainly can serve them for the rest of their lives just as a as a sport that they enjoy yeah. so we certainly we don't want to downplay the future value of of uh, you know enjoying and being excited about a particular sport you know it often doesn't uh doesn't mean being on a college team but, yeah but certainly it can be so. That's what I thought of when you were, you know, saying that. That the more um, traction you can get, you know, in in moving students along in particular sports uh, through that, the the more they're going to enjoy that the rest of their lives. Uh, we have uh, one question uh, that's popped up here that we'll take just a couple of minutes to answer, and then we'll sign off. And it has to do with procedures if we're approached by an outside company that. Uh, wants to use our facility to start a new program. I work with the just kind of facility operations here. And, um, you know, for us, actually, that's pretty difficult. You know, we don't have, you know, many outside organizations using our facilities. Uh, a part of that goes back to what, uh, what Tim was saying about the number of teams that we have and us wanting to increase that. You know, obviously, the challenge you have is the, uh, the amount of, playing time in the different either fields or courts, you know, our basketball court, because that's, we have one basketball court, it's pretty booked. In fact, you know, sometimes we use uh, court space outside of WCA just to fulfill, you know, the needs of our own teams. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a soccer field and a baseball field here on the property. And, you know, during soccer season, we're using both of those, you know, for practices and obviously, you know, for games every day. Um, so, uh, thanks so much for the question, but there's, you know, very kind of limited opportunities there. There are, uh, some potential opportunities, I guess, over the course of the summer and there, you know, have been like uh, this summer, there are a couple basketball camps mm -hmm. that are scheduled over a couple weeks here at the facility. But if you're interested in more uh, specifics about that, we'd, uh, we'd be glad to take that phone call at the school. Well, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, have a blessed afternoon and uh, thank you.